Hey everyone, it's Deacon082, and welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green Randomizer Nuzlocke, the after game. I went back and healed. Last episode, I really got a little carried away with how long the episode was going to be. But, uh, we haven't had a long episode in a while, so I guess that makes up for it. Uh, we're here. Now we've reached Outcast Island. Outcast. Maybe. I don't know. I I can't remember any song names by Outcast, but maybe Miss Jackson's here. Was that trainer named Miss Jackson? I don't know. But uh It'd be funny if Outcast Island actually had somebody named Miss Jackson or somebody. Maybe maybe these are the Jackson siblings. I have no idea where I'm going with any of this at the moment, but uh it looks like we'll do this double battle, Mr. Mime, neither of them go down, but uh, they both will go down this turn, that's for sure. That's a pretty strong fly from Liz, and then, well, we're going to get hit with a uh, Psychic, but there we go. That works pretty well, and these two go down. I don't know what's on Outcast Island, but I'm going to repel just because the surfing Pokemon are usually lower levels than the other Pokemon, in case there's any grass up here, and just because it'll be a uh, faster training later if I get something I want to use. Okay, this guy's name is Mimo. What kind of a name is Mimo, if I'm saying that right? Maybe it's like Mimo or something? Swimmer Mimo. Maybe it's Mr. Mimo. Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, Mr. Mimo. <laughs> okay. I need to focus here. What is this? A one square for me to make land? Like, what's the purpose of that? Ooh. Somebody's here. And it looks like there's no more rare Pokemon around these parts. That burns him up, man. No rare Pokemon. But he has a Dugong. I guess Dugong's not rare enough, because, I mean, we had one. They're not rare if everybody in Team Rocket has one. Also, Nidoran. Nidoran, definitely not rare, as you can find him on, like, the second route in the game. And then Dustots. Well, he's he's right, there aren't really any rare Pokemon around these parts. Not like the one guy before who had the Zapdos and the Registeel. Hmm. Have we seen any rare Pokemon? Not really. I mean, everything we can find, everything we have in our parties typically, uh, common stuff. Uh, I have a feeling there might be an item. Alright, that was all luck, but I found a star piece there. Um, doesn't appear to be any grass here on Outcast Island, so it looks like we'll have to surf to find something. This guy has a Seviper, another Pokemon I like a lot. But I like it more than Echidnarbon. Seviper is pretty balanced on both of its attacking stats, they're both pretty high, so we can go mixed. He's not that fast, but sometimes fast enough, so it's just like how you play it, pretty much. He can do almost anything with it. I used one in Emerald when I did my Mono Poison run that was not on YouTube, but I may consider doing another Mono-type run of Emerald at some point, because Emerald's just a fun game to do with that, do that way, because there's a lot of Pokémon that you can find, and like with Poison, you can get eight of them in the game, and I just kind of used all eight of them, just rotated them in and out based on what they do. The thing with a Monotype run, though, everything's kind of uh, the same, so you have to, like, find a use for all of them, so they're not all, like, the same Pokemon. So if, like, I did a Mono Water run, I'd definitely take advantage of the alternate types, like I'd use Carvana as a Dark type, I could use... Ludicolo is a grass, I could use Lantern as an electric, Pelipper is a flying, and do all kinds of stuff. And no better name for a Carvana than Cheap Cheap. Even though it's it's not really a Cheap Cheap, but it kind of resembles one, so I'll go with that. Oh man, we could have had Dragonair here. Oh well, I'm not one to just say, aww. This is Altering Cape. Now, how would Altering Cave work in a randomizer? I don't know. 
Altering Cave has a Lunatone this time. So I guess we'll just start chucking Ultra Balls. Altering Cave is, I believe, the only location that is in both Ruby Sapphire Emerald and Fire Red Leaf Green. Now the thing with Altering Cave, I forget what exactly makes the Pokemon in here change, but when you go in here for the first time, that is the wrong Pokemon, that's for sure. <laughs> when you go in Altering Cave for the first time, you'll find only Zubats, and as you, I think as you miss records or something, something like that, the Pokemon in there change, and there's all different kinds of Pokemon that you can find in there, like Mary, maybe, I don't know. At least it, it was like Johto Pokemon and stuff, in Emerald at least. So you could possibly find all the Johto Pokemon between the Safari Zone expansion and between Aldrin Cave, but there was really no point in doing that. Let's see, let's see if it's right. Is there only Lunatones in here? I believe items might also appear. Okay, so it's not only uh, Lunatones because we have a Noctowl here. This seems like all different kinds of Pokemon, possibly. I guess we'll find one more encounter. Okay, I did not recognize that as it was coming in, but it's a Swinub. And no, there's nothing in Altering Cave at all except different Pokemon that can appear, like Typhlosion. That's pretty interesting. I don't know, I kind of like Lunatone just because it's something nobody ever uses, even though it's really not that good. But I guess... I guess we're done with Altering Cave, and it seems like we're done with the whole north part of Sith Island. So that means we can head back to Sith Island Port. Um, I don't really need healing, but I'll go heal anyway. This hiker over here looks like he has something interesting for us because he's facing the other way. Oh, we, we already talked to these guys two episodes ago, so there's no point. Okay, so Water Path, we never did encounter anything in Water Path. Water Path, we have Psyduck level 44. Interesting. I think I'll catch this. I don't know how useful Golduck really is, but it used to be one of my favorite Pokemon way back in the day. We'll see, it can't learn Psychic in this generation, but there's a lot of things it can do, even though it's a pretty generic water type. So I, I might use it. I'm just giving myself a lot of options for later on. Um, and once again, I have no idea what to name this thing. I'm gonna name it Franklin because if, if you have any any reason why I'm calling it Franklin, let me know because I have no idea. We also could have found Sandshrew, so it seems like we're always missing out on good Pokemon. Here's an Aspir Berry. And here's a hiker that's looking for mountains. Well, I don't really see any mountains. But he has a lantern. Lantern has Bolt Absorb, so... Okay, yes, Lantern does resist the Bolt Beam because of Bolt Absorb. So any Electro-type move you use on it will be not very effective. For Ricardo, it's probably the best way to deal with this, even though it has water moves, just because we can hit it hard with Rock Slide if we can ever hit. Lantern's really a really good Pokemon. It's it's one of my favorite water types. Like, if I named off my five favorite water types, I'd say four of them would be from Johto. Lantern, Kingdra, Azumarill, Slowking. There's just so many good ones from Johto. Politoed. People, people bash on the Johto Pokemon all the time, but... But I, I like them a lot. Just, there weren't that many of them, and people say, oh, they threw in too many babies in pre-evolutions, and then half the Johto Pokemon you couldn't even catch in Johto. Like, if you're looking at, at a Pokedex, like, before you start, and just seeing what kinds of Pokemon are there, you see Houndour. Oh, Houndour is so awesome. But then you look, and it's, it's not, you can't even catch Houndour until halfway through Kanto, and then it's really rare. Same thing with, uh, Murkrow, only available in Kanto. Natu, oh, that's cool. Zatu, I should totally get one of those. 
only available in one little spot that you'll almost never see. I mean, most people don't even know that you can get to that point in the Ruins of Elf just because it's so far isolated from everything else. Let's see. And then half of the Johto Pokemon, like, you can't even get Mary in Crystal no matter what you do. You can't get Giraffery in Crystal. You just can't get so many things in Johto. And then half of them are like trade evolutions and stuff, so you couldn't get them anyway if you don't have a friend. I did I did a little rant on the Johto Pokemon a while back that never got uploaded, and I actually don't have it anymore, but I I might still have the actual text from it saved somewhere, but I doubt it. I think I deleted it when I cleared out my computer way back. But pretty much, back uh, like a year and a half ago when I did like a Pokemon vlog for the month of December that never got uploaded, basically the last video that got uploaded was Kanto, and I discussed like the region as a whole and all the Pokemon in it. I did another one of those for Johto, and it just... I never uploaded it, just because it got kind of boring. But the main point in the Johto video was just that there were so many great Pokemon in Johto that nobody uses because you can't get. And that was my whole point in there. Of course, if you're playing like Fire Red and Leaf Green normally, at least you can get everything except the exclusives. In Johto, you literally can't get half the stuff until post-game or never. So it's... It's just not that good, even though they literally introduced more Pokemon that I find awesome than Gen 1 did. Gen 3 has it beat by just a little bit, though. Just because they introduced more in total, I liked Gen 3 Pokemon better. But for the most part, I mean, I still like playing the Johto games more than any of them, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, there is more to do, but that's not really the reason. Let's see. Okay. What else can I talk about at this point? Not really sure, but, uh, this is interesting. I see a door over there. And that looks like Braille on the door. Yes, I'm making the typical complaint, why would you have Braille in a video game? It's not like you can put your fingers on the screen and touch and know what they're saying. So, if you're playing a video game, why would you know Braille? I guess it was just a reason to get them to buy your strategy guides or whatever. Although it was in, it was in the back of the instruction manual for Emerald. Of course, who read that far anyway? Maybe the people who were stuck because they couldn't get the braille. That's like the only reason. The Reggie side quest was cool. I had to actually get a friend to help me with it because I literally had no idea it was there. <laughs> I guess we'll fight this hiker that's not even looking at us. Ruined Maniac Foster. Cool name. I don't know anybody that's actually named Foster. I mean, it is a real name, but... Nobody really has it. I guess it's cool. Um, we're getting closer to the braille part, but I did see something on the left that it doesn't look like we can get to from here, so I'm going to go back for it. Sorry about my backtracking, but I'm a, I'm a completionist. There's a hiker here, and an item, and a boulder puzzle, which means there's just so many awesome things in one spot. You know what else is awesome? Diasis because we just can't seem to catch the thing. We almost take it out with a thunder, and good thing that wasn't a physical attack, man. Okay, so, really easy boulder puzzle here. We get a full restore, that will come in handy later, possibly. Okay, and back around, back to where we were. One final hiker, and yes, it's exploring for ruins. Always the best thing to do. Uh, Thunder Punch might take it out. There we go. Smeargle kind of sucks. Even though I can learn every move, its stats are just terrible. But yet it's still versatile and it's one of the most popular Pokemon to use just because it literally can do anything. 
but we're here outside a, a door that doesn't budge at all. I guess in the next episode we'll check it more thoroughly. I don't really want to do it right now. But there's also a surfing spot we can go around back. There's nothing there. I guess in the next episode we'll investigate a little more whatever this place is. And maybe check out that door to see what's behind it. So see you guys next time.